Hello everybody, welcome to this uh, sh hopefully short tutorial on uh, two uh, topology methods that I use and pretty much everyone in the industry is doing sub D modeling is using. Um, this will like madly improve your topology when you when you start to learn it. And uh, I'm going to give uh, two kind of live demonstrations of actually using it. And then uh, two more demonstrations of how I used it in my two models. So let's begin. All right, so we have two holes in this mesh. And we are going to use, oh, if you just put a subdivision on, put two, two, two subdivisions on, this is what's going to happen. So what someone would do, we just say like, what someone would do without knowing uh, how to do it, basically. So they would, you know, come in here, add, add this, add this. We're just going to put these two edge loops in, and then we would put this in over here. I have a snapping turn on. There we go. And then we're gonna put one over here, so sharpen that edge. Put one over here, you know, sharpen that edge up. Just make it back a little bit, make it square. And then, uh, you know, one here, one here. And then one here. As you can see, these these corners are decently sharp. Maybe they're fine. Maybe when you have the shade smooth and a weighted normal on, they they may be fine. Maybe they're, they're decently sharp. Could be sharper. But as you can see, topology is going to be horrible. So you have these two these edges go down the, the mesh. And this is a pretty simple example. Um, when you get when the model gets way more complicated, this becomes way more obvious and way more problematic. So then you have see if you have like a a bend, this will really show up. So in this this method I'm going to show you, I'm going to do what's really cool. What, what I call it is called local topology and local edge flow. So let's start off with by like going to a model that isn't completely destroyed. What we are going to do is we're going to add the edges that are necessary. So, this edge is necessary, that edge is necessary, this one, this one, all necessary, and of course these two. Right, so now we're going to add edges that we we have to have in the uh, actual mesh. So, we're going to have to have one here, we're going to have to have one here, and of course one here, one here. Well now you're going to be thinking, well you've just done what you said not to do, but we're going we're gonna to change that eventually. So what you do is you put... You join these two edges, and then you add. You use your 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 knife tool, and then you add one here. Add one here. So you're uh, adding one. You have this box, the square. You should use a, always use a, a square, or try and get as much a best square as you can, basically. Much. And then um, you're going to add on the outside of these squares two edges. And then you're gonna go. I'll put them here for now. Then you're going to go to edge mode if you want to using Blender, of course. And you're going to select these two edges that are connecting in the middle. You're gonna X and then dissolve edge. Now you will have this. So when I put an edge through that, just ignore the back. If I put an edge through that, you can see it's going down here and over there. Now. Do that on the other corners. Once you do this quite a lot, you get pretty fast at it. And also, I am using mesh tools, I believe it's called. So what I always like to do is use this, press Alt-A and left. So if this is out of here, out of place, Alt-Left, and it aligns it perfectly with each other. And this is this is something you should be doing, because it makes sure to probably look a lot neater than, than it could be. Next, uh, so that's done. Put this down a little bit. Try and make them as even as possible in these corners. Again, for neatness' sake. Right, and then you put add another one here, add another one here. J, J. Add one, oh, add one here, and add one here. So then here again, you can do this. Boom, oh, boom, boom. Up. See how that moved. Boom, boom, that move to the right. Right, now that's one side done. I'm just gonna pause, do the other side quickly. 
So you know, should now have this. And if you add a edge loop, you now have this. What you should do next is add two edges and then press J, connect them. Other side, J, connect them. This side, J, connect them. Yeah. And of course, I've uh, aligned them all. Yeah, keep it neat for sake. Uh, so, this is what we get after um, subdivision when it's turned on. And here we are. That's what it looks like. Right, so now you have now you can move this as back as far or as backwards as you want go down make it sharper make it looser all right so now you have no edge loops randomly going anywhere or well, this is the minimum amount of edge loops you should need to uh do this method and you should pretty much always use this method and if you plan ahead and plan your shapes, then you will be able to use this sort of edges at your advantage when you're going along. But right, so now I'm going to add it to this corner. This corner is going to be fairly, well, pretty much the same, same thing. This is what you would have. I'm going to dissolve these two. So I put an edge loop here. This is the edge loops you need, and an edge loop here. So you get this nice looking out of a square, close enough to a square. All right, so then you would do J, A, boop, 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 here, and here. All right, so that's all nice and even, and then that goes, that's the uh, tries, dissolve these. And there you go. So when you put an edge loop through there, it goes around here. You can control the sh uh, the strength here of the bevel. Alright, so I, for the second method, I am going to show uh, local topology. So what I, what do I mean by local topology is I mean this. So you go here, 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 here. This is the start of a local topology. This is local. This is the start of local topology. And you add an edge loop here. Of course, I like to keep them nice and even. So one here and one here. And of course, keep these flat. And you join these like this. And now you have local topology. Right, and now why would you want to do this? Well, this will help. Say if you're doing like a circle, you need to increase its um, circleness, uh, I guess. And this is a good way to do it. Or you want to do this method, but you have two shapes right next to each other. And if you just use one edge going up, you will get a complex pole in the middle. And I will, in a later video, I will sh demonstrate this of what it would look like with the complex pole and how I solved it with this issue, with this uh, method. So this is going to be pretty much the same as last time but with this and of course you will be able to have detail here and then keep this nice and strong so you would just do this like before right so i just done the same method as I've done here and I'm just going to add the last little bits I need alright so this is pretty much done now just done the same method I've done here, and of course, get rid of solve these two. Before to do that, right? Then we can add this, add one here, and then this will be sharp, nice and sharp. So subdivision on. There we go. Let's move that. I'll save it. Right. So here we are. That's pretty much done now. And of course, this is where local topology here helps us out to push an edge over here maybe if you want to do some stuff over here I don't know and make this edge here sharp with it so here I am using the edge flow method and the local topology method and uh, so this is this is shrink wrapped when doing like curves make sure you're using a shrink wrap so you don't get any 
any lumps or bumps when uh, adding this stuff because you're adding topology into a face on a curve it's going to slightly uh, deform if you do use a shrink wrap so here how I've done it I just added two edges here went through here and then I could add this local topology reasons why I didn't just um, add like use this edge to do it is you're, you're gonna get a lot of edges moving about and when you've done with it and you look back at it it's gonna look quite scruffy now that's like one thing you don't really want when you're showing wireframes in like a showreel or a portfolio you don't really want scruffy topology. You want topology that's nice and even, and you know you've actually cared about it because that's what people probably care about. So now I will talk about the issue with uh, not using this method and just having one edge in the middle. So we have just this this edge in the middle for these two holes, and we're using the um, edge flow method and not the local topology method so these you would do this and you would connect it to this one edge and do you see a problem here and just imagine these aren't here actually do you see the problem with this so in the middle you have what's called a complex pole and what a complex pole is is something that has uh, six or more edges going into one vertice and uh, if you want to compare this to something this is pretty much an n-gon but in like a vertice way this is what you would get with not using this uh, local topology method I'm just going to go back a few steps to where I was and go back to the local topology method see how these two edges are now split from one another they're completely separate from one another there's a whole two faces split them apart and then you can have one edge in the middle if you want, or dissolve it, doesn't really matter, I would prefer to dissolve it, keep the uh, faces down. Now these are completely separate, and there are no uh, complex poles, these are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5, which is technically a pole, but keep it on a flat surface, or keep it with a shrink wrap, it would be fine. Pretty much the entire method, and you should be using this method, like pretty much on everywhere on your model where you need it if you're doing sub demodeling which is probably where you're here if it's a short video of showing how to use local topology methods to uh, make your mesh look a lot cleaner a lot more professional in my opinion um, this is what you should be using on pretty much all your models if you're sub demodeling and if you don't want any triangles uh, this is a good method to do that. Thank you and uh, and goodbye.